Every human kidney tested in 2024 studies contained plastic particles. Not most kidneys, every single one. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And this is part three of our four part series on hidden environmental kidney threats. Today, we're going to discuss something that sounds like science fiction, but is happening in your body right now. Microplastics and forever chemicals aren't just in the environment anymore. They're inside our kidneys. There's a groundbreaking 2024 study published in Nature Medicine, and it found plastic particles in every human organ tested. Your kidneys, designed as natural filters, are now filtering microplastic material and industrial chemicals that didn't exist a century ago. Think of it this way. Your kidneys are like coffee filters, but they're now dealing with plastic dust floating in that coffee. Here's another startling fact. 45% of U.S. tap water now contains forever chemicals. Can consume up to 52,000 microplastic particles every year through food and water. The question isn't whether these pollutants are in your kidneys. They already are. The question is, what does it mean for your health? Let's start with key point number one. What are these pollutants? Let me break this down simply. Microplastics are plastic fragments smaller than five millimeters. They come from water bottles breaking down, aesthetic clothing, shedding fibers, and package material deteriorating. Researchers have found 66 plastic particles in just 10 kidney tissue samples. The most common types, polyethylene and polystyrene. These are the same plastics found in grocery bags and takeout containers. Forever chemicals, or PFAS, are industrial compounds used since the 90s. They make products water resistant and non stick. Think Teflon pans, waterproof jackets, fast food wrappers, and cosmetics. They're called forever chemicals because they don't break down. Once in your body, some PFAS stay over five years. A recent USC study of young adults found something alarming PFAS exposure was linked to up to 50% decline in kidney function through changes in gut bacteria. Here's a patient story that illustrates this. Maria, a 34-year-old teacher, came to me with unexplained fatigue. Her routine labs, they showed declining kidney function despite normal blood pressure and no diabetes. When we tested her blood for PFAS, the levels were significantly elevated. She lived near a former military base with contaminated groundwater. Now, this isn't rare anymore. The 2024 EPA data shows that 45% of U.S. tap water contains PFAS. Your kidneys are working overtime to filter these foreign substances, but some particles get trapped in kidney tissue. Laboratory studies show microplastics cause oxidative stress and inflammation in kidney cells. It's like having tiny splinters logged in your kidney tissue, triggering a chronic immune response. The scary part? We are the first generation dealing with this plastic burden. Key point number two, how they harm your kidneys. The science is becoming clear about how these pollutants damage kidneys. Microplastic act like tiny irritants. When they lodge in kidney tissue, your immune system treats them as foreign invaders. This creates chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. Now, studies in mice showed microplastic exposure led to kidney scarring and dysfunction. In human kidney cells, microplastics increase production of reactive oxygen species. Think of it as your kidneys rusting from the inside. PFAS damage works different. These chemicals bind to proteins and accumulate in kidney tissue. The 2024 USC research revealed PFAS, it disrupts your gut microbiome. And this reduces beneficial bacteria that produce anti-inflammatory compounds. What's the result? Up to 50% of kidney function decline from PFAS exposure came through this gut-kidney connection. Here's what happens. PFAS alters gut bacteria, reducing compounds that normally protect your kidneys. Now, this creates systemic inflammation that your kidneys absorb. And research shows PFAS exposure increases risk of kidney cancer and chronic kidney disease. The PFOA studies from contaminated communities found significantly higher rates of kidney cancer. Blood tests from affected areas shows kidney function markers deteriorating faster than normal. But here's what gives me hope. Unlike genetic kidney disease, environmental damage can be reduced 
through protective strategies. Remember, your kidneys have remarkable healing capacities when you remove the source of injury. And recent studies show people who reduce PFAS exposure through water filtration had improved inflammatory markers within six months. The key is understanding that your kidneys aren't just passive filters. They're active organs, constantly working to protect you from these harmful modern pollutants. The more we reduce exposure, the better the job that our kidneys can do. So key point number three, what can you do today? Well, here's the good news. You have powerful tools to protect your kidneys. Water filtration is your first defense. Activated carbon or reverse osmosis systems, they remove 80 to 95% of PFAS from drinking water. I recommend checking your local water utility reports for PFAS levels. If levels are high, invest in a quality filter system. Use glass or stainless steel instead of plastic water bottles. Plastic bottles, they shed microplastics, especially when heated. Food choices, they matter significantly. Avoid heating food in plastic containers, microwave in glass, or ceramic instead. Choose fresh foods over heavily packaged processed foods. Seafood selection is especially important. Smaller fish like sardines and anchovies have lower PFAS levels than larger fish. Ocean fish generally contain less PFAS than freshwater fish. Household products, they need attention. Non-stick cookware can release PFAS when overheated or scratched. That are cast iron or stainless steel for cooking. Stain-resistant carpets and furniture often contain PFAS. Air purification helps too. HEPA filtration, they remove airborne microplastics from synthetic fabrics and carpets. Regular wet dusting captures particles better than dry. Tumor awareness makes a difference. Look for PFAS-free labels on cosmetics and clothing. Support companies that are trying to phase out these chemicals. Even policy support is really important and it matters. The 2024 EPA regulations limiting PFAS in drinking water happen because people demanded action. And personal testing is available. Blood tests can measure PFAS levels, though they can't predict individual health outcomes. Once again, the most important step, start with water. Clean water makes the biggest immediate impact on reducing your toxic load. Your kidneys will thank you. So let's bring all of this together into some practical takeaways. Here are five actions you can take this week. Number one, filter your drinking water with activated carbon or reverse osmosis. Number two, replace plastic containers with glass alternatives. Number three, choose PFAS-free cookware like cast iron or stainless steel. Number four, install a HEPA air filter in your main living space. Number five, check your local water report for PFAS contamination levels. These simple changes can significantly reduce your exposure to both microplastics and forever chemicals. Listen, we're living in unprecedented times where environmental health really impacts kidney health. But knowledge is power. By understanding these risks and taking protective action, you're not just safeguarding your kidneys, you're protecting your long-term health. Your kidneys work tireless to keep you healthy. The least we can do is reduce the toxic burden. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Thank you for expressing kindness and gratitude to others and to yourself by taking care of your health. Stay informed, stay healthy, and I'll see everyone back in part number four. Bye-bye.